Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I just recently signed up for an online site called Quora. And Quora, if you're not familiar with it, is a site where people can go on and answer questions or ask questions. And it seems, from what I can tell, it's like any random kind of question people may ask. I mean, people are asking questions about their lives, asking questions about their career, what college to go to. And I thought it would be interesting to, to get involved in that. You know, I got some recommendations. It might be a good way to just uh, kind of network and get your name out there. So I went on and there was an interesting question that came up. And this was on Quora and it said, uh, why is the machining of titanium so difficult? And I, I liked that question. So I went ahead and gave an answer. And I realized that, you know, this is a topic that comes up in my manufacturing class, uh, at least, you know, briefly. Um, and I thought, well, let me go ahead and make a video on this one. I'm sure that, you know, if somebody on Quora and people in my classes are asking this question, there's probably a few people that uh, need to know this. And there's actually people who have written several books on the topic of machining titanium. And there's very specific uh, reasons why it is so difficult to machine. So let me make a video kind of going into a little more detail on it. So let's see. So let's understand a little bit about titanium. So there's a reason we use titanium, uh, and if you look at some of the applications for it, you know, this is different titanium alloys, uh, it has some very specific applications, certain benefits to it. You know, you can see it in turbine blades, which is up there. It's oftentimes in, in landing gear, so in aerospace, you know, you can see it in landing gear, you know, see it in, in turbine blades, you know, in those types of applications, and as well as in uh, helicopter components. Uh, you know, in the you know, there's several types, and there's also parts like the exhaust of the helicopter system, uh, and then you know, of course, there's medical applications and, and other applications such as that. But uh, this, you know, in particular, if you look at the just the aerospace industry, and that is one that I've I've worked with quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of questions as to how to do things like machine titanium. It's actually, you know, a very highly demanded component or material in, in those applications. And if you look at all those applications, they have certain things in common. You know, turbine blades, landing gear, helicopter. Besides being aerospace uh, components, is these applications have certain things such as dealing with high temperatures. You know, a jet engine, you know, is a very high temperature application. So you need to be able to deal with have a material that works in the application without uh, having a lot of thermal you know thermally degrading so something that doesn't you know conduct temperatures too much uh, they also require a lot of strength you know the landing gear of a plane is actually holding up the entire plane as well as you know having to be lightweight the whole nature of aerospace you know the, that's one of their their bigger demands so titanium and particularly these different titanium alloys are the perfect fit for the aerospace industry they're they're stronger than steel and they're more lightweight than aluminum or roughly in the same lightweightness of, of, of aluminum so you know these is sort of the, the perfect blend of, of the properties of two materials that are very common so again so the things that make titanium great for our engineering application are what make it difficult to machine you know so we looked at aerospace you've got these applications that require a lot of strength require light weight uh, re require uh, you know dealing with high street uh, high heat you know high temperatures you know so this is great if you're de designing a turbine blade or landing gear you know you don't you want something that can deal with a lot of heat without a lot of expansion of uh, not having to transfer heat from another component that might be damaged and you also need you know something that can deal with a lot of the strength as well as the lightweight aspects of it but it also are properties that make it you know very difficult to machine so again this is just a random tool i pulled up you know a tool that looked damaged and burned out uh you know and that's one of the issues of dealing with titanium is that it will degrade tools and cause you a lot of premature tool wear so again keeping in mind those same properties of what makes titanium great for an engineering application will make it difficult in a machining and other manufacturing applications. So let's review what, what exactly is going on in a machining application. And so this is a clip from or a GIF of a cutting tool uh, going through some material. I don't know what material this is and it doesn't really matter. It's just there for it to illustrate a point. But as you can see, you've got your cutting tool and you have the workpiece here in below. And as the workpiece or the tool is traveling through the workpiece, through this depth of cut, 
it actually you know cuts through the workpiece shears the workpiece and generates a chip all right and that's just the generic machining process but if you look back at our past videos what you can keep in mind is that there's a cutting force of the tool as it goes through the workpiece there's also uh, reaction forces you know in the thrust force as well as the friction force as well as another force that comes into play and that's the shearing forces shearing forces is actually what makes this chip it actually takes you based on your depth of cut and the type of tool you have the sharpness of that tool very important the sharpness of that tool actually allows you to cut through that material and generate a chip and it starts you know you can see that forming in the shearing plane and in more ductile materials this will be a shearing zone so whatever cutting tool material it has to have a sharp enough edge and be strong enough to be able to go through and uh, create a chip you know shear the the material in order to form this chip and then that's the de definition of a cutting process another thing about the cutting process is that in out of the entire cutting process you know from the workpiece the base of the workpiece all the way through the tool into the machine tool spindle uh, this section here is the hottest this is where the most heat is generated and it's generated the temperature is so high that you can actually weld things like aluminum and steel so it is very very hot in this part of the of the uh, cutting zone and the fact that it takes so much more force to cut through this only makes the problem worse now what does this mean so there's there's cutting forces in everything there's cutting forces with aluminum there are cutting forces with steel why what's the big deal with titanium well it comes down to the high heat generation and the fact that titanium is a poor conductor of heat so what what happened when normally with say aluminum is that heat would be generated and it would go through the path of least resistance which would be this highly conductive material of aluminum and it would exit with this chip with titanium because the temperature is you know it is so uh, poor of a thermal of a conductor it actually follows back up into the cutting tool okay so it goes through the cutting tool and this causes the cutting tool to actually degrade now if you look at this table just to give you some comparison between three different materials all used in aerospace applications you know, this is a titanium 6-4 down at the top uh, steel a 310 stainless steel and 7475 aluminum you know you can see the shear strength comparison titanium is much stronger you know so it takes a lot more shear cutting forces to go through titanium so it takes a lot more cutting forces to go through there the tensile strength is almost you know twice as much as both of these two materials not quite but close and then on twice and the thermal conductivity uh, is you know it's a lot lower than steel you know less than half of what steel is and it is nowhere near what aluminum is so as you can see titanium 64 has at least you know two characteristics that are going to make it much more difficult to machine it's got the higher shear strength so it's going to be harder to cut you're going to need much you know sharper tools and much more cutting forces to go through that as well as the fact that it has a you know much poor uh, ability to conduct heat so how do you deal with this so how would you normally deal with uh, cutting tools or this this con, you know machining of titanium well there's a few things you have to do one you have to well you actually have to address the forces and the heat and that's one of the reasons why titanium tends to require a lot of flood coolant you know that is one of the biggest problems with titanium is you know being able to keep the, the a lot of flood coolant on the in the cutting zone to try and drive away a lot of that heat you know so that the heat can travel away with the coolant versus traveling back up the tool also keeping the tools sharp to try and keep the cutting forces down make the cutting process easier using carbide tools is you know they're not very uh, uh, prone to breaking down through heat they tend to be a little more resistant a little more stable under those conditions as well as adjusting the cutting parameters make sure the speeds and feeds don't generate a lot more cutting forces than necessary so this is professor cummings and i just wanted to answer that question off of core i think i might do that um, make that one way of getting videos because i think that's where a lot of uh questions a lot of good questions seem to pop up there particularly in the manufacturing sector so again 
thanks for watching and uh, I'll talk to you next time.